I feel like with each release, Go is being more pleasant to work with. Today I wanna share a few things that Go's next release, 1.24 will bring, as well as some potential language changes in the long run, type unions and the new JSON library. And finally, even though it's not really Go news, we'll say a few things about the protobuf changes, since I find them pretty exciting and a lot of Go developers work with protobuf. And since my kids are sick, this will be a pretty low effort video, but I hope you'll find it interesting nonetheless. So let's start with the features of the upcoming Go release 1.24. I found a nice article from Upson that sums it up pretty well, so I suggest we quickly go over it. First we have performance improvements which are always welcome, then weak pointers, this is a really nice feature which some people are probably really gonna appreciate. If you don't know what weak pointers are, let me read you the first sentence from the article. A weak pointer is a reference to an object that does not prevent the garbage collector from collecting it. So basically, if you have a weak pointer to something, it might get freed anytime. There is a nice write-up on Victoria Metrics website about weak pointers, which I suggest you check out. TLS package gets post-quantum cryptography, as well as encrypted client hello. JSON package gets a new omit0 tag that allows skipping struct fields with zero values when marshalling. This differs from the existing omit empty, because that one basically only skips fields that are not defined, e.g. are nil. Then there will be a new tool directive in Go mod files, which basically allows dev dependencies and easier invocation of various generation tools. I find this one very exciting. There is finally a built-in context in tests. There is a new experimental sync test package for testing concurrent code. And then there are improvements to the language all around, as always. For more accurate information, check out this article or the unfinished Go release notes. One change that this article doesn't talk about is the ability to specify generics in type aliases like shown here. Alright, the next release looks nice. Now let's look at some potential features that are currently in the wet dream phase and might never be implemented. First, a feature I'd love to see in Go, but I doubt it will ever get implemented, type unions. These are not like the scary old union types from C, they are like, for example, enums from Rust. In Go terms, a type union would specify that a variable can be any of the listed types. This is how this is supposed to look like in the latest proposal. Now, this is technically already possible by making an interface with an unexposed method, so that only your package can implement it. This is not really a common pattern, but it's not that uncommon either, and I don't know, it's pretty clunky. Personally, I think that Go would really benefit from type unions, since this also potentially means better nil value handling and maybe even a change to error handling. As you probably know, Go's error handling is hated by many people, so this could have a positive impact. It's not hard to criticize Go's error handling, and that's because it actually exists. Alright, next thing on our list is the version 2 of the JSON package from the standard library. There is a discussion on GitHub that has been opened for quite some time now, that discusses the problems with the current JSON parsing implementation. The discussion is pretty interesting, and you're welcome to check it out. There's also an experimental implementation that these guys wrote. It contains goals and design overview, and most importantly, you can check out its Go doc to check out the API. Now, as this is a low effort video and the package isn't finished yet, we won't go into details here. Here's just a quick example, and you can see that it allows you to parse JSON. Wow! I suggest you check the package out by yourself and let me know what you think. I think it looks good overall, the only thing that I don't necessarily like is that martial and unmartial functions refer to a different package called JSON text. I'm not really a fan of splitting a contextually single package into two parts, but I don't know, I might feel differently if I ever start using it. Anyways, let's look at the last item on our list, the new opaque API for protobuf. If you don't know it yet, Protobuf has changed their release model from Proto2 and Proto3 to what they call Protobuf Editions. This will allow incremental improvements to the language and personally I find this change welcoming. For Go users, the most notable change comes in the form of a new opaque API. Basically, when you generated Go code from Protobuf until now, it produced structs with exposed fields, which you could interact with directly. 
This kind of API is still supported and they call it the OpenStruct API. The opaque API on the other hand doesn't export any fields and it exposes them only through setters and getters. Most importantly this will allow for better memory usage and I think it will also reduce the nil checks while parsing your internal structures to protobuf definitions. Looking back I find it interesting that protobuf didn't have this kind of an API to begin with. And that'll be all for this video. As always, I'm interested in your thoughts about this stuff we talked about. Are you excited about any of these changes? Let me know in the comments. Other than that, I hope you had a good time. Thanks for watching and I wish you all a happy new year. Bye.